are terrible alien beings that look like clouds secretly taking over our technology infrastructure. Should we be worried or excited? Well, fortunately, cloud computing, while somewhat complex, isn't an intergalactic message of doom from a terrible, misty force of extraterrestrials. Actually, it is a new way of storing information that will greatly change the healthcare world, not to mention your personal world. Think of it this way. Let's say you are using an EMR or medical billing system that currently sits on a server that you have purchased and that you own. Over time, this can get really expensive from ongoing maintenance and upgrades to backups to fault tolerance and load balancing, not to mention making sure everything meets the government's privacy standards. Also, because you have purchased the servers, you have already paid for the space, whether it is being utilized or not. Along comes cloud computing. Let's think of it another way buying a car. You can buy a car, and it is yours. You can do whatever you want with it. But it is expensive. You pay up front, and you have to maintain it, whether it sits in your driveway or you drive 100,000 miles each year. This is like a more traditional method of computing. Companies buy the servers to store their information. Cloud computing is like getting in an on-demand taxi. You never have to wait, but you don't own the car, so you aren't worried about the maintenance. And because you only pay for the exact amount you travel, you know your money is going to its intended purpose. So what are the implications for a medical practice? Well, this new concept of cloud computing can have major advantages for a medical practice. As mentioned, the first reason this is beneficial is scalability. Whether you need minimal server space or enough to house millions of patient records, cloud servers allow you to easily and instantly grow or decline with need. Second, this scalability has the added effect of reducing your costs. Similar to a utility company, such as electricity or gas, you only pay for the amount of space you use. Third is location independence, meaning you can access your information wherever you are, whether you have your computer or not. Let's think of this another way. Imagine a hospital that has magical qualities so that there is never a shortage of patient beds, there are always the perfect number and balance of surgeons, nurses, physicians, and administrators, and there are just the right number of medical supplies on hand for the patients who need them. So, for example, if there's a flu outbreak that suddenly sends a large number of people to this magical hospital, osteopaths, radiologists, and janitors will morph into ENT specialists to handle the influx of patients. Ace bandages, crutches, stacks of paper, and staplers will become Tamiflu, cough syrup, and Kleenex to accommodate all of those with upper respiratory infections. Resources are always perfectly available, which means that patients can always be treated by the right expert, and there is never a wait time. That describes what cloud computing is. Now let's talk about what it isn't. The cloud terminology is used rather gratuitously to describe a variety of types of network configurations. But be careful. If you are being charged a hosting fee from a company that is giving you access to a mainframe computer via an internet connection, that is not cloud computing. Hosted solutions, sometimes known as terminal services, work by pushing a pixel-by-pixel -pixel reproduction of data running on the mainframe to individual desktops. It's not fast, definitely not very secure, and not at all scalable. Unless the product you are using is built for the internet from the ground up, you are not accessing files in the cloud. Let's go back to the analogy with the hospital. This time around, the hospital lacks the magical properties from the previous example. All personnel and supplies are finite and unchangeable, so there is no viable way to acquire additional qualified providers or order more supplies. What you see is what you get. So in the case of a flu outbreak with this non-magical hospital, resources would not necessarily be used efficiently, and everyone would have to make do with the precise number of ENT specialists and triage nurses on hand, which would mean a long line of sick and frustrated patients waiting to be treated. In short, not a very efficient use of resources, as is the case with terminal services. Cloud computing sounds great, but are there any risks? Well, that is definitely a very good question. Like all shiny new improvements, cloud computing isn't without its drawbacks. One of these major concerns is, who owns the information that is on the cloud server? We saw a similar example of this recently with the Facebook rule changes. 
Essentially, Facebook said people were allowed to upload their photos to Facebook, but Facebook ultimately owned the photos and could do whatever it wanted with them. Photos, while important, don't necessarily have the same repercussions as proprietary business knowledge. Can you imagine the implications if Coke stored its secret recipe on a cloud server and the service provider declared it owned the information? Potential users should make sure they have a detailed contract that specifically addresses this concern. Similarly, another issue is privacy. Many people are concerned that users of cloud computing sacrifice privacy to all the other users of the cloud. Once the data leaves the relative safety of your on-site computer, you can't be sure who has access. Most providers afford the ability to encrypt your information, but that isn't a cure-all. Make sure that the service provider segregates the data and provides encryption designed and tested by specialists. Additional legal and political risks abound. Where is the data stored? Who is responsible for legal infractions? And there is no uniform system of regulations. Users must be sure to understand how these concepts and ideas will affect their use of clouds. So what's next? Many experts think cloud computing is the next evolution in technology. Computers will be evolving away from hardware with operating systems, hard drives, and applications such as PowerPoint and Excel to smaller machines with the sole purpose of connecting to the internet and users will have access to applications and storage in the cloud. Companies like Google and Microsoft are investing millions to make sure their business model is applicable once this change occurs. Regardless of what is in store for cloud computing, however, many advantages are current and if able, medical practices should consider the cloud as an alternative to their health information technology needs.